everybody. Welcome to Chai Time with Marijuana Rani, your host, uh, Bob Ross's long lost twin, apparently. Um, <laughs> but welcome to my home. Welcome to Chai Time at my home. Another beautiful cup of chai. Thank you, Chai Pani Mom. Yay. And today Hi, is everybody. Particularly delicious. Minty. Well, we're doing at Chai Time today. Today, we're going to be making a curry. Uh, now, the word curry gets thrown around a lot as sort of a catch-all for all things Indian gravy-ish. So any kind of sauce, gravy, typically is referred to as a curry, not necessarily by Indians. I think we have a little bit more nuance and distinction between what we consider a sauce, a gravy, a curry, or some other name. Uh, but for most Westerners, when they see sort of an Indian sauce, usually with coconut milk, they think of the words curry. But there is a traditional curry and variations on it, and I'm gonna make one of them today. This one is from the region of Indian was Goa, which was the capital of Portugal, uh, when they colonized India in about the 1500s and stayed a Portuguese territory almost till the 60s. And uh, it's a beautiful part of the country, coastal. And what makes this a Goan curry? Well, there's a couple of hints here. So these ingredients are gonna be essentially the very simple ingredients, and this is what I'm gonna be calling the essential ingredients. And then in addition to this, I have some optional ingredients, but the whole point of cooking at home with me is learning how to cook with stuff you hopefully and probably already have lying around. So what are the basic ingredients? One white, medium white onion. It's probably about a cup and a half, or maybe, yeah. And people ask all the time, red onion, white onion. Did I say green onion earlier? Not that I heard. Okay, white <laughs> onion, red onion. Um, red onions tend to be a little bit spicier, a little bit more zip to them. White onions tend to be a little sweeter. Most Indian cuisine is done with red onions, but in this particular case, I like white onions because I do want this curry to be just a little bit sweeter. And no matter what, you could use either onion. At the end of the day, it's an onion. It's got 90% of the defining characteristics of an onion. Okay, garlic cloves. About six to eight small garlic cloves. If they're large, like these ones are monsters. You know, I got four large ones. It's probably about as good as Six small cloves, red chilies. Now these are just regular dried red chilies, and this is where the heat for the curry is gonna come from. So you can put as few or as many as you want to. I got about two, four, six. Mm, Chai Pani Mom wants it medium <laughs> spice. Yes, yes, please. And if you, but if you like that sweat in your brow spice from a curry, this is where it's gonna come from. And black peppercorn. Heat also comes from black peppercorn, and this is about two, Maybe a, a teaspoon, give or take, a heaping teaspoon of black peppercorn. And you can add more black peppercorn for heat, but unlike the chili peppers, this will also add peppercorny flavor. So if you want more heat, go with the chilies. Peppercorn, I'd keep it right about there. And then you've got uh, coriander seeds, beautiful, grassy, fragrant, citrusy, and look at the color. This is, of course, a spice, well as Indian coriander, so it's green and not sort of yellow and brown. And then cumin seeds. Turmeric powder, curry, you gotta have turmeric powder. And then of course the lime and the coconut. It must have the lime and the coconut for making a good curry. Um, so these are, I would say, essential ingredients to good curry. But before we go any further, let me go ahead and dump the onions into the oil. Um, I don't know if you guys watched my pakora recipe from last week, but I had a lot of oil left over from that and it was nice onion scented oil. So we're Using some more of that, I saved it in a nice glass jar in the pantry. Let's get the onions in and let's get these fried. Now you might be saying, no, marijuana. Your previous episodes have the onions fried off because it takes a long time to get them golden brown. How come we didn't do it this time? Well, for this particular curry, we're not going to fry the onions golden brown. We're gonna actually sweat them and get them sweet, um, but without them getting them crispy like we sometimes do in other recipes. All right. Honey, do you care which spatula I... Oh boy, let's see. Can which I one is already ruined? This one? Can I use this one? <laughs> it will be forever turmeric stain. This is a good one. It's already, yes. I think we've already done damage to this one, so okay. we can use this one. Go for it. Okay, so back to the curry uh, and the idea for curry. Um, so for me, what I would consider a traditional curry is usually with coconut milk, is usually South Indian in origin, and has three or four characteristics that to me sort of define a curry. Uh, most often seafood, and that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do a seafood curry, and definitely coconut milk, and also a hint of acid. And that acid can come from lime, uh, the common sort of hopefully household ingredient. But if you don't have lime, the acid can also come from tamarind, which is probably makes it more goan, or kokum, which is a sort of a flower. Um, it's almost like, looks almost like a dried hibiscus flower, but a little bit tougher, and it also adds 
amazing color and amazing sort of tangy, citrusy flavor to dishes with a little bit of smokiness. So, spices. Um, I'm gonna toast my spices. You guys have heard me talking about this before. And because this is not going directly into oil, I'm making a masala out of it. I'm gonna go and throw it in the pan, which I've been keeping warm already, and give it a light toast. That, that, and that. And that's hot. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with keeping it in a pan and forgetting about it. That's every the every cook out there and kitchen chef is going, yep, 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 saw that coming. All right. So this is frying. And then the last ingredient, which is here I've got some what did I pick up? Oh, some grouper. Some beautiful grouper. That's and grouper? That's grouper. Huh. Um, sliced up in a chunks. I mean that's just what they had. It looked really good. I kinda wanted a medium firm fish, not too light and flaky. Uh, not too strong of a flavor like salmon or something. I mean, you can certainly do a curry with salmon, uh, but you know, salmon's so delicious on its own, you kind of want to keep it clean. Um, here, this is a nice mild white fish, medium firm fish, and I just hit it with a little Kashmir chili powder, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of turmeric. Optional. I could throw the fish in just as the way it is and without any problems, but I'm trying to add a little extra flavor to the fish so when it goes into the curry at the last minute. You mean you could um, just throw the fish in there without any. Spice marinade on it. At some point when we do it. Right. Okay. And you don't want to heavily spice marinate this because if you're putting it directly into the curry, what's going to happen to the spices? They're going to wash off the fish and, and flavor the curry, right? Now, if I was pan frying this or maybe roasting it or searing it, I'd put a little bit more curry. Um, I saw the look in Chef Honey Mom's face. <laughs> Honey! Spices are spices. burning! Spices are burning! Uh, well, they're toasting! <laughs> toasting! Toasting! And let's put this in a bowl over here and cool them off for a second. Actually, it's perfectly toasted. If you haven't learned everything, it's always perfect. It always works out perfectly. Best part about Indian food. Okay. Actually, I want people to see the color of that. You can see how the colors got transformed. There's a little char on the um, on the chili pepper there. The uh, coriander's got brown spots in it, and the cumin is definitely thickened. I mean, <laughs> darkened. <laughs> <laughs> Too much chai. Not yeah, we're wired on chai. Wired for chai. All right, this is so simple. Think about it. Onions, literally two spices, chili pepper, salt, garlic, turmeric, coconut, lime. I mean, I hope to God you have almost 90% of these ingredients in the house. And if you don't, it's easy to run to the store and pick it up uh, tonight or tomorrow morning. So what do we do with all this magicness? We're going to do a holy technique that we did with the Vindalu recipe. We're going to buzz it and blend it all. So my garlic goes in. The spices cool very quickly. They almost cool down to the touch now. Those go in. And we're gonna put a little bit of turmeric in there. So you could use any kind of blender for this. Or Pretty small much, yeah. cuisinart or anything like that. Yeah, exactly. Like that. I'd say blender better than a food processor because it's such a small amount. If you've got a small blender, that would be great. Um, a food processor tends to smear it around the sides and then it's hard to get into a paste. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I'm saying about a half a teaspoon of turmeric because this is gonna give the color that we want. Onions are frying beautifully. They're browning. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to it. Turn it down a bit. And a little bit of water so that this whole thing turns into a paste. Yeah, that's it. Okay. About a quarter cup of water so that it all turns into a nice paste. And then... Daniel Peach is there. Peach! How you doing, Daniel? bud? Go on fish curry, a chai pani classic. One of my favorites. Going back to the OGs. Total comfort food. Look at this rainy day out there. Can you see how rainy it is here? Perfect food for a rainy day. And we're gonna buzz this. Of course, Rosie's demanding to go out right now once we start. Into a paste. Get it all to the bottom where it's gonna spin. Get it in there. Just join 
too from Posies for Lulu Vintage. Look, this cup was made by her. Look at that beautiful cup. That's for chai time today. That is for chai time. Hi, Rena. Mm. Uh, everything, everything is better with a cup of chai. Every moment of the day, a little smoother, a little sweeter, a little more exciting with a cup of chai. All right, so next step. See how I said I didn't want to brown the onions completely? I just wanted to sweat them and get them sort of uh, slightly golden brown, but not, you know, not starting to turn that dark brown. And now this masala is going boom, straight into there. Are you ready for this? Ready. Let's see what happens. Oh, I'm gonna need one of those scrapers. Let's get this bad boy. Meanwhile, Rosie's stealing your thunder, honey. What's she doing? Somebody's asking what kind of dog she is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the dog gets way more. She gets more attention than attention any of us in this us house. Welcome to my world. No, she's a golden doodle. Standard poodle and a golden retriever mix. So scrape all the stuff out. Don't let any of it go to waste. It's all the flavor. And we had it precisely measured out, so you want to get as much of that as possible. If needed, you can put a little water in there. Just a tiny, tiny amount, because we don't want to make this wet. We still want it to fry. But let me do exactly that. A little more water, put the lid on. Give it a really nice shake to get the rest of that stuff out of there. Why don't you use ginger in this recipe? Um, because it's just not traditional to this recipe. Ginger is used in South Indian cooking, but not as often as you'd imagine. It's, you're far more common in North Indian um, and uh, Central Indian cuisine. And even in um, Western India, Assam, sort of all those areas, you'll see ginger in South India. You don't see necessarily see a lot of ginger, especially in a curry like this. So yeah, just in case, great question, because people up to now probably see me put ginger and garlic as a paste mm -hmm. in almost everything I've done. Because most of the recipes I've done right now have been either Central or North Indian. But this is a curry. No ginger necessary. Okay, so now what are we going to do? We're going to fry this sucker. Fry this. Fry this. So the, the water, the little bit of water that was in there is going to evaporate. And this paste, this masala is going to fry with the onions. And this is sort of a real classic uh, technique. Parsis adopted this technique also. They have a number of dishes where they also fry the masala, they make a paste. Sometimes they've even put the onions in with the blender and pureed the onions into a paste also and then fried the whole thing. But here I want a little bit more body from the onions for our curry, so we're going to just fry it this way. Okay. so. Guys, we're almost done. I mean, from this point forward, we're just gonna add coconut milk and a little bit of acid, and then our fish, our protein of choice. Now, here's where a few optional ingredients come in. Curry leaves. If you have them, great. If you don't have them, don't worry about it. It's just a nice thing. People think that a curry is supposed to have curry leaves. Not necessarily. You can still get all of the goodness of the curry, all of the other spices going on, without necessarily the leaf of the curry plant. However, having said that, if you guys can get yourself curry leaves, it's great to have around the house. And here's the thing, you can buy them fresh, most Asian markets would sell them, you can buy them on Amazon dried, or you can also buy them probably fresh mail order from somewhere or the other. Once you get it, get a nice bunch of it, dry it out, and then store the leaves in a glass jar and in a cool dark place and they'll preserve all of their flavor. Um, and especially if you're gonna be frying with them, um, all that oil and essence and flavor from the curry leaves is going in. So somebody's asking, they had a problem where if they, they didn't fry the onions to a crisp, it created sort of a bitter flavor. Have you experienced that with no, this recipe? No, the onions shouldn't do that. It could have been the spices that were put into the onions. Maybe if there was mustard seed in there and the mustard seed didn't pop, it was a little bitter. But the onions by themselves, they do sweeten and the more you cook them. And by the time you caramelize them, they actually the sugars from the onions have started to come out. But they shouldn't have been bitter. Uh, unless they were really just raw, in which case they would have been more, you know, oniony than bitter. So okay. um, maybe the oil burnt a little bit. Um, so a couple of curry leaves in there. And actually, I'm going to put one or two more curry leaves in there. So this is going to take a few more minutes to fry. But this, don't skimp on the step. Don't, you know... Um, uh, screw the step up is what I'm trying to say. 
because this is where the base, the foundation for the curry is going to come, especially once we put coconut milk in there. So the better this is fried, the more body, the more the flavor of the masala, the more the flavor of the spices are going to come through in your curry. We've gotten curry leaves fresh at Foreign Affairs in Asheville, haven't we? In Asheville, you can have Foreign Affairs, and of course asking. in Atlanta, you know, but almost all Indian grocery stores, even small corner ones, usually carry curry leaves. Sometimes they're frozen, which is also fine. Bring them home, let them paw, and then go ahead and dry them out, or keep them in the freezer. The only thing to note that if you keep them in the freezer for a long time frozen, they tend to turn black-ish in color. Doesn't mean they're spoiled. It's not slimy, it's not mold, it's just the color changes. They still have that flavor. But if you dry them out, like I've done, then they retain their nice green flavor, and they just have, have a little bit of that freshness to them. Okay. So somebody that's from Goa is saying that um, her recipe, the original recipe, is not traditional to have the curry leaves in it. So is this exactly. sort of your that's version of That's why I said it? it was optional. Yeah. That, exactly right. You could have made it without it, and it would have been perfectly fine. But I just said, like I said earlier, and it's a really good point, because we so often associate the flavor of curry leaves with a curry. You know, I said optionally you can put a few leaves in if you enjoy the flavor. But if you notice, it's not about the curry leaf. It's about the masalas, as the person pointed out. Mm -hmm. It's about the gar the ginger, the garlic, the black pepper, the uh, the red chilies, and also the coconut milk and the acidity is going to be a big part of this. And frying the masala the way we did, turmeric powder, uh, and a little bit of cumin and coriander. Um, and there's probably 20 variations on this, and this is just one that I like because it's easy, it's simple, it's fast, and it's a crowd pleaser. Like everybody has it. Well, people like. Sorry, we paused for a second because your phone was ringing. Um, what was the other question somebody had? Hold on a second, I just lost it. It was, um, oh, is spice oil gonna carry curry leaves at some point? Yes, we certainly hope to carry curry leaves at some point. It's just a pain in the butt to get them fresh, dehydrate them, dry them, not have them crumble up into you know powder as you're packing them and packing them tins, working on it. Now we can get your curry leaf powder pretty easily, but actual whole dried curry leaves is just a little bit harder. Thank you for the suggestion. Write your senator. <laughs> Appeal to the powers that be that people need more curry in their lives. Congress should do something. But most international markets have them. Most Fresh. Them, yeah. Yeah. Fresh, yeah. All right, guys. We're pretty close to um, the level of friedness I want. Um, I always tell people to taste. Mmm. Like. Mmm. Mmm. Only thing missing is the acid. A lot of heat right now. Those seven or eight red chilies, you know, they were powdered and compressed in a very small amount of masala here. So I've definitely got my tongue lit up. But once the coconut milk goes in, all will be forgiven. Speaking of coconut milk, let's do it. So two cups, it said. I had a half a cup left over of coconut milk and I just opened up a fresh one. And let's go ahead and put those bad boys in. So don't worry if you open your can of coconut milk and there's a big lump of dried coconut paste on the top and water on the bottom. It's all gonna incorporate and melt when you open it completely, so don't worry about that part. Can you tell people real quick the website they go to to order spices for Spicewalla? They go to spicewalla.com or spicewallabrand.com, both URLs work. We had started with Spicewalla brand and that was the only URL and then we got Spicewalla, so hey, which URL one you see, they both work. And I mean, guys, um, I mean, you know, of course, Spicewalla, my company, is fantastic. Our spice quality is amazing. But you don't have to buy it just from Spicewalla. This isn't a pitch for only buying from Spicewalla. It's a pitch for buying fresh spices, having a good pantry of them, and rotating them, toasting them, getting rid of them when they get old. As I've said time and time again, the average tin or jar of some bunga spices is five bucks or less. Um, after two, three months, Get rid of it if you haven't used it, if, because if you smell it and you don't smell much and you can't tell is this cumin powder or coriander powder, it's lost its vitality. It's like stale coffee. Dump it, get some more. It's a very small price to pay for incredible amounts of flavor in your food. Um, it'll literally transform the way you cook. All right, enough uh, evangelizing about spices. <laughs> People um, have lots of spice questions today. Go for it. Lauren Van Epps, if you're on there, maybe you can answer some of those small big tin size questions. Don't ask me about sizing. He's gonna forget. I, I can give barely information. I can barely <laughs> tell you what the recipe amounts are. Um, hey, yeah, can you let her out? That'd be great. Just keep an eye on her. Um, 
Mm. All right, that warmth is starting to come. So, once the coconut milk melts and it looks like it's well incorporated, we're gonna then tin this out more with some water. And roughly about the same amount of water to coconut milk. So I said about two cups of coconut milk, roughly two cups of water. And this is gonna be, well, let me back up for a second. From this point forward, it's a recommendation. If you like a thick, sort of creamier, more coconutty curry, definitely need some water because this is gonna thicken up, but you can put less. You can put maybe a cup of water. If you like a thin, hot, spicy curry, the kind that where you pour it on the rice just sinks down to the bottom and just has this, you know, really thin, wonderful sort of um, broth curry here. broth almost, almost like a broth, exactly, that I love. I love that about a curry. I love a thin curry. Then add a little bit more water. I wouldn't go more than two cups of water to this because past that, you might start diluting the flavor and I would have bumped up the amount of spices, but a two to two cup ratio of water to coconut milk will give you a nice balance. Um, the only exception, and like I said, if this was too spicy, if you try this recipe, next time just t take a few of the chilies out, those red chilies out. That's the only thing that's added spice so far to this dish. All right, and when adding water, make sure you're adding. Warm. Hot. 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 I guessed wrong. No, well, warm water for that pakora batter. That's where you're ah, going to Ah, that's where I had it from. But if you, you already have a hot dish going, you don't want to shock it by putting cold uh -huh. water in there. You want to keep the boil going, so we're going to add hot water to this as soon as this starts getting a little bit of bubbly. So, okay. Look at that. It already looks like, I mean, looks like a Mandelbrot <laughs> equation here with all the beautiful striations. Every barista is looking at my handiwork here going, <laughs> very nicely done. All righty. I'm going to get some hot water. Be right back. I'm going to show you the curry meanwhile. Look at that, delicious. So using the tea kettle? Yeah, that's where I keep my water hot. That's roughly about two cups. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and... Would you say this is the second most popular curry at Chaipani? Under butter chicken? Under butter chicken, probably, yeah. I'd say as a curry, absolutely. It's, just, it's the second most. Mm. What question, Craig? What do you think, Daniel? <clears throat> so I'm gonna add a little bit more salt because I taste it as I went. And I like salting as I go, building up layers of saltification. <laughs> uh, well, salt does different things. When you put it in with the onions, it helps the onions sweat more, extract some of that liquid out. Um, then, you know, during the masala phase, you add a little bit more so you can taste if you've got the balance. Because here's what salt's supposed to do. What salt's supposed to do is to draw out the flavors of the other things. You don't want things to taste like salt. That's never salt's function. Um, but when salting correctly helps you then identify, are my other flavors in balance or not? Without that salt, you can't tell if something's got too much this or too much that or too much uh, sweetness or whatever. Okay, once this comes to a boil, then turn it down to a medium simmer. And... There's a dog cacophony going on outside today. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Everything's in balance. I'm gonna give it about another minute. And then I'm gonna add my acid. So, for my acid, I've got one of two things. I've got tamarind paste. And what we've got, hang on one second. We gotta, what's happening? Dog, hey, teenager in coming. Can you go wipe her off? <laughs> Sorry, real life over here. Um, uh oh, wet dog. Wet dog. Wet, wet dog. dog. Wet and dog. from the outside. Yeah, look at those muddy footprints. Where's Aria? Help us, Aria. Aria. Help. Go see her. Call her. Can you go dry go the on. dog off? Go on. Welcome go to real it. life cooking, people. Okay, so, back to the tamarind. Right, so tamarind, and this will give you that sort of really traditional Kokan coastal flavor, you know, of having tamarind in your curry as the, as the souring agent. Let's see what that looks like. And you can buy this in blocks, like I said last time. And these have been de-seeded. It's literally the pods where the seeds are moved and then just compressed in a block. And in a little bit of hot water, if you take a piece of this off and soak it in hot water, it'll end up looking like this. It'll soften and turn Ooh, into, ah, there we go. <laughs> into a paste, right? And, uh, and you can store it in a jar and use it for other things down the road. Uh, alternatively, you can buy this sort of pre-made and pureed, where it's basically tamarind paste. And most Asian grocery stores will sell it, any kind of 
uh, Thai or you know Vietnamese use a lot of uh, tamarind in their cooking. So just go to an Asian grocery store. They'll have little tubs of this. The blocks I usually find in Indian um, grocery stores. Um, and this is a great way to add acid to this. But if you can't find it or don't have it or don't want to deal with it, fear not. The humble lime and the coconut, like the song says, <laughs> go together perfectly. What you're looking for is acid. The tamarind adds a little extra, you know, extra, extra, uh, je ne sais quoi, to the dish in addition to acid. And if you can find it, use it. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of that tamarind in here right now. Uh, let's go for a healthy tablespoon of tamarind and uh, maybe a not so healthy, an unhealthy tablespoon of tamarind. There we go. <laughs> there. Put that in there. Give it a whisk and a stir. I mean, if I wanted to be a purist, I would have pureed it. You, you get it? <laughs> it does a purist do eat purists. Um, I would have pureed it, it would have been really smooth That's a and dad I wouldn't joke have worried. If I've ever heard Sorry. one. Sorry. Have you seen this? Look at this. This is dad. <laughs> dad cooking. Dad, dad jokes. Cooking. Go with dad cooking. Um, but then you wouldn't have any of those fibers in there. But you know, we're cooking at home. It's okay. Don't worry about it. A little bit of having to chew on something or, you know, gag it down is not going to kill you. All right. <laughs> what does that mean? And the last, the last step. Hang on, let me do one more flavor quick check here. Mm. And the <laughs> other thing the tamarind adds is a little bit of sweetness also. Mm. Because the tamarind's sweet. We go to the line. So I'm going to do both. Tamarind, and I'm going to put this in. Mm. Now, the fish. At this point, folks, you can put any kind of fish. I'd recommend a firmer fish. So that doesn't sort of fall apart in the curry because it's going to cook in there for a few minutes. Um, shrimp works just great. Prawns. Um, yeah, I guess those would be your choices. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put any kind of uh, mussels in here or clams or anything. It might be delicious, but hey, this is more traditional. All right, so we got to put this bad boy in. Oh, sorry. One more thing you could do along the way. You could pan sear this if you want a little bit of crispy. And at Chai Pani, that's what we do. We actually fry the fish off a little bit and then we finish the dish with it so that the fish is, you know, nice and bright and crispy when it comes in there. You can certainly do that or you can just certainly put it in the way it is right now and cook it more traditionally. What kind of fish was it again? It was grouper, but... Mm -hmm. Could cod work? Cod, it, that was exactly what I was going to say. Who said that? Susan... Good. Kuruvilla. If they had cod, I would have probably bought the cod. But exactly, they didn't have cod, so I put the grouper in here. But, you know, halibut. I wouldn't spend the money on, like, putting swordfish in here, which is a really expensive cut of meat. But, yeah, um, uh, snapper, uh, grouper, cod. Rosie's photobombing you all again. The, all the errs, all the errs would work. Rosie. Um, I mean, tilapia also would be fine. You know, I know tilapia is sort of like the... Um, a slightly vilified fish, but you can get high quality tilapia from South America as long as you stay away from the Chinese or the Asian stuff. And it's a perfectly great fish for a curry dish like this. Because it's not about tasting the fish. It's about tasting the curry and the fish together. So don't waste money on a really expensive cut of fish with delicate flavors that are going to get lost in a curry like this. You just want a nice, meaty, medium fishy fish. Take it from there. All right, folks. The fish is going to cook. The curry is going to be done. And uh, we're going to garnish it with some sprigs of cilantro. And we're going to call it a day. What's the time? Five o'clock. Look at that. On the money. Boom. 30 minutes. Boom. What should we serve it up for today? Ah. How long will those chunks of fish take to cook that you put in there? Minutes. 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 I mean, if they start to look like they're flaking and falling apart, they're done. I mean, it's a hot liquid. It's small chunks of fish. Um, minutes. Three, okay. four. Just enough till they're done. And if you like your fish with the living daylights cooked out of it, go for it. If you like it a little bit firm, cook it less. The raw fish is not going to kill you. Molly Ronnie might kill you if you stain <laughs> all of her, all of her utensils, but the fish... Yes. Only provide, stain a couple of the utensils. Only provide pleasure. Now, at this point, that fishy flavor is also coming to the curry because it's, you know, it's, it's flavoring the curry, so that's why it's going to change characteristics as you go. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That tamarind is so beautiful in there. But still needs a little bit more acid. And I'm going to finish with the lime. You want the lime, we don't want, we want the lime to go to literally last because you want to taste the lime fresh. You want it to be sort of on the, on the tongue, if you, uh, if you like, 
as you have it. You don't want to go ahead and put it in too early and then have it just be a background note. Uh, you want to taste fresh lime. I mean, just like squeezing fresh lime onto a piece of fish, just as you're about to enjoy your taco. Same principle here. So as you serve this up, a little wedge of lime on the side, squeeze the fresh lime over the curry, over the rice, and voila, it'll be beautiful. I'm massaging the lime. It's had a hard day. <laughs> the poor lamb. I can feel the tension. Quarantine the knots, lamb. <laughs> knots in the shoulder here. I'm just working them out. Um, a little quarantine lamb action. Lime, lime action. Lime. I called it lamb too. I know. Okay. Now, what I'm doing is just softening it up so that the juice squeezes out easy. Um, how about looking for honey? A knife. This is going to go onto IGTV after this, right? Yes. This will be posted on Spicewalla and Marijuana Rani's um, feeds. And so the I'm just putting a squeeze in now, contrary to what I said, like squeeze the lime when you serve it, I'm putting it now so that I can taste it and make sure it tastes good, because, mm -hmm. you know, this is what we're doing right now. What did you mean by salt helps us identify the other flavors? Uh, so, um, you, as you cook, if you're trying to see if you're, you know, if you're turmeric, if you're sweetness... Um, bitterness, um, coconut flavor, like all of these things, if you're trying to taste them without salt, the tongue doesn't, can't activate to be able to pick up on the nuances of this flavor. It's like the cumin and the coriander and so forth. That's why salt is one of the most, you know, incredible human inventions of all time or discoveries of all time, the addition of salt, recognizing chemically what it does is it activates the taste receptors in your tongue so that you can really like, you know, like a dog can smell a million things. You know, all of those little nodules in your tongue literally spring to life and can differentiate and taste the complexity and the tapestry of flavors going on in a dish. So that can happen at any point. You can salt, you know, anything at any time and taste it. But as I'm trying to figure out, am I, is the dish going to taste the way I want it to taste? Do I have enough this? Do I have enough cumin? Do I have enough coriander? Do I have enough tamarind? Do I have enough acid? Do I have enough heat? Salt is the glue that binds it all together that helps then the tongue Say, oh yeah, that, I can taste the, I can taste this one. Oh, it needs a little more of this, it needs a little more of that. I can taste that paprika. So that's what I mean by salt, you know, activates flavors in the dish. Um, and that's why I like using salt as I cook in building blocks because every stage of cooking I want to taste, is this part tasting the way I want to taste? Um, so even at the masala stage, when all the spices and, you know, the garlic and all that was in there, that pinch of salt at that stage also helped me then when I tasted it say, Oh, it's a little too garlicky or not enough garlic. That's not forward. But without salt, it's so hard for the human palate to figure these things out within balance. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a zone, the salt zone on your tongue. You go too far past it, and then it blows everything out. Then you just can't taste anything, you know, because you're oversalted. Um, and Vish that's just I mean. joined. Just Vish, you joined just in time to miss Marwan's entire um, dissertation on salt. Oh, my God. I want you to watch that part, Vish, <laughs> and send me all the criticisms tonight <laughs> by text. It. At two in the morning. I was wondering why there was no harassment going on today. Harassment. All right, guys. So let's see how this looks. The fish is, oh, it needs a, a little bit more time. Yeah, still a little. Yeah, I forgot. Grouper takes a little longer. So it needs another minute or so to be done. Yeah, not quite, not quite flaky. But guys, we're, we're. Mmm, that lime at the end. So beautiful. And actually, believe it or not, just a little bit more salt. And in case you're wondering, like, whoa, Meryl, that seemed like a lot of salt. Coconut milk also coats the tongue. And uh, usually dishes with coconut milk need a little bit extra salt to be able to break through the, the uh, richness and the fattiness of the coconut that's uh, coating the tongue. And that's why acid works so well with coconut also. It helps cut the, the fattiness and the proteins and the oil of the coconut so that you can taste it even better. Somebody's asking about your beautiful blue pot. Ah, my pot. beautiful blue pot. This is a lodge pot. And uh, for those of you that have been following my Instagram videos, for the most part, if you see me cooking any kind of sauce, gravy, masala, curry, I've been doing it in either a lodge cast iron pot or a staub cast iron enameled pot. Why? Uh, they retain heat beautifully. Uh, they're always the perfect size. Um, and every, everything just tastes better when you cook in a beautiful pot. Vish wants to know when the Donsak episode is going to be. I know, Vish. That Dunsak sounds amazing. I love Donsak. Those two episodes okay. are, are in my, in my uh, works in progress. Um, the problem with those recipes is that we, when we cook in the restaurant, cook it in five to eight gallon batches mm -hmm. and for special occasions. So to scale them down for home use and to make it so that it's not these uh, esoteric ingredients that are really hard to find or technique that takes, you know, two days to prep for. I declare this curry fantastic.
<laughs> Let's play it out. Okay. Um, let me find who, what, how, when, what do you, oh, here we go. We haven't used one of these little Asian style stone bowls yet. I don't know why it's calling to me. Oh my God, honey, that is so good. I'm so that excited. That is so good. I mean, I can't Wish even you all could you. join us. I mean, my mouth is watering at the thought of making rice with this right now. So I would serve this obviously over a bowl of rice, but it's a curry. I mean, if you just wanted to mop it up with some bread or roti or paratha, but for plate of purposes, I just want to show you how beautiful it is. Fish is making a pitch that we feed all of Asheville with your Don Sock. <laughs> That's what we, there's one way to make five gallons of it at a time. Um, oh my God, look at how pretty this is. Already. Are you gonna have it with some flaky bread? So Your people want to know. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. This is cilantro's looking a little wilted. Let's give it some fresh, pretty cilantro for the camera. Um, you know, and if you wanted to live on the edge a little bit and really go with the um, go with a little bit of that heat and that extra flavor, just a little pinch of Kashmir chili powder to give it that pretty red on top, and a couple of cilantro leaves on top, and there you guys have it. Uh, beautiful, delicious, so simple. I actually, even with all the yapping at you, finished this in 30 minutes. <laughs> I could have done this in 15 if I wasn't doing all this other bullshit along with it. And and you got a curry that can make a big batch of this, and then here's the trick. If you wanna make a bunch of this and save it, don't put the fish in. Just make some, pull out what you wanna save, and you can freeze it in a glass Tupperware box, or heck, you know, worst case scenario, you can even put it in a Ziploc bag, pull the air out of the bag and then freeze it in the fridge. Uh, and then the part that you're gonna eat that day, keep that part hot and then add your fish or shrimp or whatever to the mm -hmm. day. Otherwise, if you put shrimp in this and try to freeze this or fish or anything, it's gonna be a disaster the next day. Don't do that. Um, well, folks, oh, and then of course, last but not least, finish with some fresh lime. All right, guys, thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you, Chai Pani Mom. Thank you, Rosie, <laughs> for some distractions along the way. Try this dish at home. You're gonna love it. It's so difficult to screw it up. Follow this recipe precisely. There's a little bit of heat in this. Cut back on the chilies if you don't like too much heat, but if you want that sweat off your brow, add a couple of chilies. Keep the rest of the proportions the same. Um, text me, I mean, text me, DM me if you have any questions about the dish. Uh, let me know if you tried it. Uh, put it on Instagram. Tag me or Spice Wallace so we can follow along and see how your cooking adventures are going. And till um, next week, I'm not going to be on this Saturday. It is Arya's graduation. Yay. If she ever goes to college, we'll see or not, depending on Corona. But I'll be back next Wednesday, and we'll have some more fun then. Thanks, Chef Bunny Mom. Bye, everybody. Later. Bye, everybody. Bye. Chef Bunny Chef, out.